This is where Schubert's Winterreise begins. This little book was published in Vienna in 1823. It is called Urania in Taschenbuch, a paperback. I don't think Schubert would have bought the book himself. He was never in funds. He would have borrowed it, perhaps, from his friend Franz von Schober. He would have flicked through the pages and found a poem by Rückert, which 17 years later Schumann was going to immortalize as Widmung. And then he would have reached page 207. And on page 207, he would have read Wanderlieder, Songs of Wandering von Wilhelm Müller in Zwölf Liedern. He found this book in 1827 and he immediately proceeded to set the poems to music, all 12 poems, starting with Gute Nacht, which he composed in D minor, ending in Die Einsamkeit, likewise in D minor, after which he wrote Finis after the song. This was the original Winterreise. It was later in the year, later in 1827, that he found further poems by Müller, which he then incorporated in what we now know as the full Winterreise, or 24 songs. Who was Wilhelm Müller? Minor poet he might have been, but second rate he certainly wasn't. He was greatly admired by no lesser figure than Heinrich Heine. Heine wrote him a letter in June 1826 in which he said that there was no other German poet apart from Goethe whom he so loved. He also sent him a dedicated copy of his Lyrisches Intermezzo, that wonderful collection of poems which has inspired so many composers of Lieder, including, of course, Schumann in Dichterliebe. And then he also sent him Reisebilder. And with Reisebilder, he sent him this accompanying letter. And I quote, I am generous enough to admit to you openly that my modest intermezzo meter does not merely possess a coincidental similarity to your usual meter. I admit too that my Lyrisches intermezzo almost certainly owes its most intimate and characteristic sound to your songs. I actually got to know your Schöne Müllerin poems at the very time that I was writing my Lyrisches Intermezzo. German folk song influenced me very early in my career. And when I was studying in Bonn, August Schlegel revealed to me many metrical secrets. But I think that it was in your songs that I first discovered the pure tone and true simplicity for which I was always striving. How pure! and clear your songs are, folk songs, every one of them. Wie rein, wie klar sind ihre Lieder, und sämtlich sind es Volkslieder. Heine would have admired the simplicity, the directness with which Müller told this story, in a quasi-folk song-like style, but without the archaic trappings of folk song. He would also have admired the romantic irony that is present in many of these poems, the self-mockery. If you listen to a great actor like Gerd Westphal recite these poems, you will detect a bitterness and a sarcasm that is rarely present in performances of Schubert's Winterreise. It is also significant, I think, that in the Romantische Schule, which Heine wrote in 1836 as a survey of romantic poetry, he set Müller above the poet Ludwig Uhland, whose own Frühlingsglaube had been immortalized by Schubert in 1820. And it is to Uhland that Müller owes a considerable literary debt. Uhland's Gedichte, his poems, appeared in 1815, and they included a section of Wanderlieder, the very title of these Winterreise poems. And if you compare the vocabulary and the imagery of Uhland's poems with Müller's poems, there is a startling similarity. Darkened suns, chill winds, leaves falling to the ground, a wanderer who sets out. 
And the sixth song in this series of Wanderlieder is actually called Winterreise. It is clear that Müller knew these poems. And three years later, in 1818, these poems were set to music by Konradin Kreutzer. And these were known in Schubert's circle. We know this because in Spahn's memoirs, he tells us this story. We found him playing through Kreutzer's Wanderlieder, which had just been published. One of his friends said, leave that rubbish alone and sing us a few of your own songs. Lasse das Zeug und singe uns ein paar Lieder von dir. Whereupon Schubert replied tersely, but you are unjust. The songs are very beautiful and I wish I had written them. Ihr seid doch ungerecht. Die Lieder sind sehr schön und ich möchte sie geschrieben haben. The first performance of Schubert's Winterreise took place at the home of Franz von Schober. And we know from Spahn's memoirs that the assembled company failed to understand these songs. They were ganz verblüfft, they were quite taken aback, they were utterly nonplussed by the gloomy mood of these songs. And Spahn goes on to tell us that Franz von Schober only liked one of them, Der Lindenbaum. And there might be a very good reason for that. In the sepia drawing that Moritz von Schwind made in 1868, reliving a Schubertiade, we see Schober not listening to the music, but flirting with the two women either side of him. But why did they fail to understand these songs? Was Schubert's voice to blame. We know that he did not have a trained tenor or baritone voice. I don't think so. He would have sung to them often at the Schubert Yarden and they would have been used to his composer's voice. Was it perhaps his piano playing? We know from Ferdinand Hiller, who wrote an article on Schubert in 1827, that Schubert's piano playing was weit entfernt meisterlich zu sein, was very far from being that of a master. But there are other contemporary accounts that say that his piano playing, although not technically perfect, was incredibly expressive and inspiring. I think we have to look elsewhere. It was the novelty that nonplussed them. Die Schöne Müllerin, which had appeared four years previously in 1823, has a real plot and it has three deftly drawn characters. Winterreiser has no plot. Nothing happens. The wanderer sets out and meets nobody until the final song when he encounters the hurdy-gurdy man. They were simply not prepared for such gloom at Schober's on that premier evening. I think they should have been. All his friends, von Schober, von Schwind, von Spaun, Meyerhofer, had received letters complaining of ill health. And in 1823, Schubert had penned that wonderful poem, Mein Gebet, My Prayer, in which he pleads for a release from physical torment. And in 1824, he wrote a letter to his artist friend, Leopold Kuppelwieser, which runs like this. In a word, I feel myself to be the most unhappy and wretched creature in the world. Imagine a man whose health will never be right again. Imagine a man, I say, whose most brilliant hopes have come to naught, to whom the happiness of love and friendship have nothing to offer but pain at best. Well might I sing now each day, meine Ruhe ist hin, mein Herz ist schwer, Ich finde sie nimmer und nimmer mehr. My peace is gone. My heart is sore. Never shall I find peace again. For each night on retiring to bed, I hope never to wake again. That is no run-of-the-mill melancholy or hypochondria. And although his friends obey the social niceties, although they are guarded in their letters, they never mention his syphilis by name. Schubert sent one of these friends, the composer Franz Lachner, to the publisher Tobias Haslinger, 
with the first songs of Winterreise. And Lachner tells us in his memoirs that the publisher paid einen Gulden for jedes Lied, one guilder for each song. But Schubert would not let the songs go, and Spaun tells us in his memoirs that in the few moments of lucidity in the final days of his life, Schubert corrected the proofs to Winterreise, singing all the while, während er beständig sang. I find it almost unbearably poignant that this great genius, who was not always appreciated in his lifetime and who only had one concert devoted entirely to his own works and who, as far as we know, never enjoyed a loving and consummated relationship, should pour out his heart in these wrenching songs of unrequited love. <laughs> 